Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Louise, a watercolor artist. Today, let's do some practicing together. I got this urge to paint a fox because I hadn't done that in a long while. And apart from birds, foxes are one of my favorite animals to paint. So I've designed this video as a form of tutorial, but maybe more just a let's practice together thing. I don't know, tutorial to me feels like I should know exactly what I'm doing and lead you through each carefully planned step. And that's not the case. I don't always know what I'm doing. I should probably plan my paintings better, but I actually like to just dive in and go with the flow. And I wanted to relax and have fun with this box. And I invite you along with me. I will show you exactly what I'm using, my paper and my brushes and my color palette. I will make the reference photo available to you as well, so you can paint alongside me. And I will try to explain my thinking as I paint, because I think that's more valuable than just imitating and copying. So let's get started. This is the beautiful reference photo that I'm using. It's by uh, Judith Ven Venstra. It's a Dutch name, I think. Sorry for slaughtering it. Um, anyways, beautiful photo, and I'll link it below in the description. I decided to challenge myself this time by choosing a larger sheet of paper. I usually go for A4 sized paper, simply because it's the most comfortable size for me. But I want to practice painting a little bit bigger. So I'm using A3 today. That's around 11 by 16 inches for you Americans. And this is the paper that I'm using. Canson XL, 300 GSM, cold pressed, fine grain watercolor paper. My favorite to practice with because it's affordable, but still good quality workable paper. I'm using my three trusty round brushes for this. The number six and the number 12 and 16. These two are Winsor & Newton Cotman brushes. They're very affordable too. And this, by the way, is just a kitchen sponge that I cut these little slits in and I use it to sort of rest my brushes. Now for colors. I use Winsor & Newton Professional watercolors and this is the 12 color half pan set that I've modified with some tube paints from the same brand because some of my favorite hues were missing. For this painting, I will use some of my favorite colors. And I'm realizing that maybe one reason why I love painting foxes is that they let me use this particular color combo, which is burnt sienna and indigo. I love those colors together. As you might know, blue and orange are complementary colors, meaning color hues that sit opposite one another on the color wheel and that go very well together. I'll also be using some raw sienna and yellow ochre for the lighter yellow-orangey tones and also mixing in some sepia and black for the darker tones. Let's get started with the sketch. This is a 4H pencil, really light, so I don't know how much you'll see. I like to keep my sketches really light and loose, barely visible, because I don't want to feel restricted when I paint. And if there are lots of really dark lines everywhere, I kind of feel like I want to stay within them. Like I'm doing one of those painting by numbers sheets. And that's not the style of painting that I'm going for. I like a little more freedom and spontaneity. Focusing on getting the basic proportions right looking a lot at the angles and the negative space, correcting as I go. It doesn't have to look exactly like the reference photo. A reference photo for me is an inspiration and kind of a safety net for getting things like anatomy and perspective and lighting and those things right. Oftentimes I'll use just a few aspects of a photo, in this case the pose and some of the colors, but I'm not trying to copy the whole thing. And if it deviates a bit, that's okay. As long as it reads like an accurate real life fox. There we go. Time to paint. Getting my damp kitchen towel ready, which I use for dabbing off excess water and paint. 
And now I'm starting by establishing the base colors of the fox. Usually that's the lightest color that I see. So in this case, I'm using raw sienna and yellow ochre. And then I start laying those colors in really loosely using my largest brush with lots of water and letting it sort of dance across the paper. making sure that I'm saving some white here and there for highlights. And by the way, sorry if my hand is in the way sometimes. I find that holding my brush directly above the paper helps to get the brushwork that I want. And now you'll notice that I start to reinforce some parts of the painting with a bit more saturation and contrast. Places where I know that I want darker tones. And going in with a burnt sienna now. Doing some blending and taking some of the color out in some places. I do this by dipping my brush in clean water and then dabbing the excess off and then wetting the area on the painting and lifting out some paint with the brush. You have to be really careful when you do this so you don't damage the paper. If you're using a good quality paper, this is usually very easy to do. You can also use a paper towel and sort of dab it on the painting and it will lift a lot of the color out. So it's a really good way to fix mistakes. Now, when my warm colors have dried, because I don't want them to bleed together, I go in with a very diluted indigo. I mark out the sort of the shadows of the fur, but also leaving lots of white here. the paint on the head is dried, I can go in and add some shadows there using the sepia or the dark brown. I'm being very careful, especially around the eye, because I want a lot of crispness and contrast there. I want clean edges, no blending or bleeding together of colors, so it's important that the area is fully dry before I add more colors to it.
a game of building up the contrast gradually while still preserving the loose and expressive quality to the painting. Not blending too much, not covering up all the white areas, leaving lots of sort of half-finished looking areas uh, is what I like to do. And so I'm jumping between the different areas, putting in some contrast and then letting it dry as I'm working on something else. And I'm focusing most of the contrast, like putting the details and the deepest and darkest colors on the face, because that's where I want the eye to go when looking at the painting. And the rest of the body can sort of fade away a bit. It doesn't have to be as detailed and can look a bit half finished. It's a trick for this style of painting, mixing areas of high contrast and detail with areas of low contrast and detail. I talked a bit about this in my video about I think it's called seven tips for looser, more expressive watercolor paintings, something like that. The one with the chickens. I'll link that one in the description. And now towards the end, I try to really saturate my burnt sienna using lots of paint and less water to get the colors really strong and vibrant. doing the same with my indigo. Watercolors tend to lighten up as they dry, so it might look too much when you apply the paint, but when it dries, it's actually going to look great. Here, a final run through with the burnt sienna. Oh, gorgeous color, like fire or whiskey or amber, burnt caramel. I almost want to eat it. It just it looks delicious. just the final little details of the eye to make it look three-dimensional and really pop. And what I usually do then is darkening the corners, putting some more saturation towards the middle and making sure that the highlights are intact. And with that, our fox is done. I hope you've enjoyed this more thorough tutorial-ish 
paint along. If you did, let me know by liking this video and I would love to make more of them. And if you did choose to paint along, I would love to hear how it went and maybe see the results. Write me a comment and if you posted your painting somewhere, maybe tell me your Instagram handle or website or art station or wherever else people share their art so that I can cheer you on. And with that, my friend will wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, for liking, for subscribing, for being here with me. I appreciate you all so much. Have fun painting and I'll see you in another video.